everyone, it's Narissa and welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. This video I'm super excited about. It's an air fryer recipe video. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you consider subscribing. If so, don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you don't miss when I upload. This video shares with you five of the Pioneer Woman's 45 most favorite easy and delicious air fryer recipes. I will link everything below. I picked five that are American cuisine that you probably already have in your meal plan, except these versions are much quicker and also much healthier because they are air fried. They're not complicated and they are all really, really good. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, the first recipe I'm gonna share with you today is for air fryer fried chicken. This is a great way to get your fried chicken fix and it's so much more healthy than frying it on the stove. Air fryer meatloaf is the next recipe, possibly my most favorite out of all five recipes. Then air fryer crunchy fish. This was so good. I was so surprised at how well I like this because I am a little bit picky with my fried fish. Then following that is air fryer steak bites and mushrooms. This was so simple and such easy cleanup. I highly recommend trying this one. And then of course air fryer pizza. These are great little personal pan pizzas and they were so good and cooked right in the air fryer. So let's start with the air fryer fried chicken. Now I was a little skeptical about trying fried chicken in the air fryer, but I have to be honest, it actually was pretty good. When following through this recipe, there are a couple things that I would do differently, and I will share that with you as we go along here. But I decided to use chicken thighs. I had boneless, skinless chicken thighs in the freezer that I needed to use up. So I decided to use this for the air fryer fried chicken recipe. So I am just trimming off some of the fat. So nobody wants that in their fried chicken. Next, I just took a large shallow plate. It's kind of a retro plate that I actually found on a yard sale and I absolutely love it. But you take a large shallow plate and you put some flour on it. That's gonna be your dry dredge. And then I took a medium sized bowl add some buttermilk, some eggs, some hot sauce, some uh, paprika, salt and pepper, and then also some baking soda and also baking powder. And this really makes a difference in the batter. I highly recommend doing this if you're frying chicken the original way as well. It really gives you a nice crispy crust. So I'm gonna preheat my air fryer to 375 degrees. You always wanna do this when air frying anything. Just preheat it to whatever the suggested cooking temperature is. And then I'm gonna take my boneless, skinless chicken thighs, dredge it in the flour, and then into the egg mixture, and then back into the flour and set it aside. And then repeat for the rest of your chicken. Now at this point, this is something that I would do differently. I had too much of the egg mixture on my chicken. The recipe even says to make sure and drip off the excess egg wash or egg dredge. And I didn't do as good a job of that as I should have because some of the chicken was a little bit eggy and not cooked through. This next step is important. You want to spray your chicken with cooking spray. This will really help your batter crisp up. And I'm going to cook this chicken for 20 minutes, at which point I am going to take it out and flip it over and then give it another good spray with cooking oil on the other side and then put it back in the air fryer and cook it for another 10 minutes. Then if you're doing batches, you want to repeat this whole process and you know, obviously cooking times may vary, but this was the perfect cooking time for my boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And honestly, they were really, really good. I was really impressed and I will definitely be making this again. Next up, probably my most favorite recipe of these five air fryer recipes is this air fryer meatloaf. And it's not because of the air, or I'm sorry, the meatloaf recipe. It's actually because the way the air fryer cooks this meatloaf. Oh my goodness, it is so good. It's so moist on the inside and then it has the perfect crust on the outside. I highly recommend making your favorite meatloaf recipe in your air fryer. Now, if you don't have an air fryer and you're looking for one, I will link mine down below. I absolutely love it. It's a ninja. It actually bakes and broils and fries. You can also reheat in it. I reheat in it all the time. It's so much better than using the microwave and it actually crisps up your reheated food. So um, it's awesome. But for this meatloaf recipe, you add about one pound of your protein. Um, you can use you know, any type of protein. It doesn't have to be meat. I'm using ground beef here. 
And then like any normal recipe for meatloaf, you wanna add breadcrumbs, some ketchup, some diced onion, some egg, mustard. This one calls for liquid smoke, which I really liked. A little garlic powder, some salt, smoked paprika. That really added a nice flavor as well. So then I'm just going to mix it up with my hands in this bowl and form it into a meatloaf loaf that will fit in my air fryer. Now with any recipe, like I mentioned, you want to preheat your air fryer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This recipe cooks for 20 minutes at 370 degrees. So you wanna go ahead and preheat your oven for 370, or your oven, I'm sorry, your air fryer at 370 degrees and bake off your meatloaf for 20 minutes. Now for a side for the meatloaf, I'm gonna make some butter honey carrots. And I have this amazing can opener that I wanted to share with you. It's by the brand Kitchen Mama. And it's awesome. It uses magnets to clamp tightly onto your can and it automatically turns around 360 degrees. It's so super, super easy to use. And you just, it's a one touch button to operate the can opener. I have gone through so many can openers, they constantly jam and get gross. So this one is awesome. I will link it down below. Like I said, it's by the brand Kitchen Mama. If you're interested, I actually have a code. They were nice enough to send me a 10% off code. It's Nerissa10, that's N-E-R-I-S-S-A-10 for 10% off your purchase. They also have a lot of cool other kitchen gadgets, but um, I'm definitely gonna get one of these for my grandma. She's 90 years old and um, has trouble working a traditional can opener. So I'm definitely gonna get one of these for her. It only takes two AA batteries, like I said, as the one touch operation. So it's perfect for your grandmas in your life too. The next step for our meatloaf is to make the glaze. Now everyone has their favorite glaze. Let me know down below what your favorite meatloaf glaze is. This is mine. Ketchup, brown sugar with a little bit of mustard. So, so good. So we're gonna set that aside and I'm going to make some sweet potatoes with this meatloaf as well. With I'm using my little microwavable potato bag. Once the meatloaf has cooked for 20 minutes, look at that, look at that amazing crust. We're going to add the glaze to the top of the meatloaf and then put it back in the air fryer and air fry for another 10 or 15 minutes. When your meatloaf is done air frying, you wanna let it sit for a good 10 minutes so that everything like solidifies. And look at this piece of meatloaf, so good. I've already made it again since making this video, highly recommend. The third air fryer recipe today is this crunchy air fryer fish, and I decided to make fish sandwiches with it. This was really, really good. I was surprised. I was a little skeptical because I am picky about my fried fish, like really picky, and I was really happy with it. Um, I decided to use some wild caught fish out of the freezer. I think these were bluegill and crappie. Um, you could use any fish, and of course I spilled my mayonnaise all over, but um, you could use any fish that you have on hand or that you can find at the store. Now, since I decided to do a fish sandwich with this crunchy air fryer fish recipe, I decided to make a remoulade sauce. It has Cajun flavors, it's really, really good. It has put some Old Bay seasoning in it. Um, I will leave the recipe link down below, as well as all of these recipes too. Um, but this remoulade sauce is really, really good. I highly recommend it. It has like mayonnaise, pickle juice, uh, some paprika, a little bit of hot sauce, some mustard, um, garlic, of course, Old Bay seasoning or any of your, your favorite Cajun seasonings. And um, also your, it's, it calls for horseradish, but I never have horseradish, but I always have wasabi. And wasabi, wasabi essentially is horseradish, so you can sub just substitute wasabi for horseradish. Um, now I'm just gonna set up my little dredging station here. I have three shallow plates. There's my, my retro uh, 70s plate as, again. And I'm going to take two eggs and just scramble them on one of the plates. And then I am going to put the dry batter on the other plate. And the dry batter consists of cornmeal, a bit of paprika, garlic powder, some salt and pepper, and anything else that you would want to add to it. But I was thinking that this could have used a little more salt than I added. Um, it's called for one teaspoon of salt and I should have um, measured that and maybe even added a little bit more. 
but you want to take your dry ingredients and mix them together so that they're evenly combined before you start dredging your fish but as soon as you do that you want to make sure that your fish fillets are really really dry before you start your dredging process and that's what I'm doing here I'm just pressing them in between two paper towels to get most of the moisture out and then dipping them in the egg wash and then into the cornmeal mixture you want to spray your fish with nonstick cooking spray or cooking oil and I actually ran out so I just used a pastry brush and um, brushed them with some olive oil which worked pretty well but since then I have purchased a Misto um, olive oil sprayer it doesn't have any of the propellants or anything like that I'll link it below in case you're interested you just add your own olive oil but you want to put it into put your fish into a preheated 400 degree air fryer and cook it for about 10 minutes and then you want to open your air fryer up flip the fish look for any dry spots if you see some dry spots you want to go ahead and brush those with oil again and then cook your fish for another five to seven minutes now my fish was pretty thin so I didn't have to cook this as long I did end up cooking it for about 10 or 12 minutes. So you can see I'm just brushing my second batch of fish with the olive oil. Wish I had that Misto olive oil sprayer at this point, but I didn't. And um, cook off the second batch of fish. Now I'm going to assemble my sandwich. This was so good. I loved this meal. I highly recommend frying fish in the air fryer. It really is super simple and it is, is much healthier too. All right, so here I'm just going to assemble my sandwich on a toasted hoagie roll. I'm gonna layer some fish as well as some lettuce, some cherry tomatoes, and then a nice helping of that remoulade sauce. And then here is our dinner for tonight. Highly recommend this fried fish. The fourth recipe that I'm gonna share with you is this air fryer steak bites and mushrooms dinner. Oh, this was so good. I just love the air fryer. It is so much nicer to fry something in the air fryer and not get grease all over your stovetop every night. This recipe was probably my husband's favorite recipe, although I did overcook the meat slightly, so I will definitely make that change the next time I make it. But I just have some regular button mushrooms that I am cleaning up with a paper towel. Um, you don't want to wash your mushrooms that will make them mm, change texture, but just wipe them off with a dry paper towel. And you can see that one was really, really dirty. So you want to make sure you don't skip that step. But I'm just going to cut these button mushrooms into bite-sized pieces and throw them into a medium-sized bowl. And then I am going to cut up my steak and add it to the bowl as well. Now we actually had some ribeye steaks on hand and so this turned out really really good and I was really glad that we used a, a nice cut of meat but you really could use anything. Um, any type of meat that you have on hand will work just fine. Um, the next time I make this I will probably use venison so anything will turn out great I'm sure. But I'm just trimming the excess fat off of this ribeye because I don't want too much fat in the air fryer and cutting it into bite-sized pieces as well. Now, this air fryer steak bites and mushrooms recipe calls for eight ounces of mushrooms, um, as well as some melted butter and some Worcestershire sauce, as well as some different seasonings like garlic powder and some salt, um, pepper, and then if you wanted to add some chili flakes for a little bit of spice, you can, which I didn't, but this was really simple and simple ingredients I just I really enjoyed it I will definitely be making this again as well
heated my air fryer to 400 degrees and then in the meantime I'm going to bake off or I should say microwave off some potatoes using my microwave potato bag again. If you guys don't know what this is I'll try and find something similar and link it down below but basically use this potato bag and you can cook your baked potatoes in four minutes apiece. So if you're using um, two potatoes you want to microwave them for eight minutes. All right, so you just want to add your meat and mushroom mixture into your air fryer and you want to cook it for 10 to 18 minutes and toss it two or three times during that cooking time. Now, like I said, I wish I would have cooked it less, um, but still it was really, really good and really, really tender. So an excellent meal. Last but not least, air fryer pizza. These air fryer personal pan pizzas are so cute and so fun to make. They are completely customizable and are really, really good too. So I am just using a store-bought pizza mix. The kind I am using was um, Pillsbury. Betty Crocker also makes one too, but it's essentially just a um, dry mixture that you add water to, warm water. And it does say if it's a bit too sticky, you can go ahead and add some extra flour and then cover it and let it sit for five or 10 minutes. It was really super simple. I do enjoy making my own pizza crust. I think I do have a couple of videos that I will link below that shows how to make your own pizza crust from scratch. But this is really, really easy and it makes a quick dinner, whereas making your own pizza dough from scratch does take quite a bit longer. So I am just chopping up some iceberg lettuce to have a side salad with our personal pan pizzas. And I am just using some iceberg lettuce as well as some cherry tomatoes, some mozzarella cheese, and then salad dressing. All right, so now that my dough has rested, I am going to cut it in half. And this was actually a thin and crispy dough. Um, what I should have done was cut it into fours and um, maybe froze half of it because it was not thin and crispy. It was actually more like a pan pizza, which I actually prefer. My husband doesn't, he prefers thin crust, but it, it was perfect for me. So I am just using a seven inch spring form pan. I actually got this at Aldi's to put into the air fryer. It's kind of a pan in pan method and putting my pizza dough in there, putting some just regular old pizza sauce on top and then loading up this pizza with toppings whichever you prefer. I had leftover taco ingredients, so I added a bunch of toppings. And you just cook this pizza at 320 degrees for about seven minutes. And if you want it a little bit crispier, you can cook it for an extra minute, but look at this, it was so good. I was so happy with the way this turned out and we'll definitely be making this again. All right guys, so that is five of the Pioneer Woman's most favorite and easy recipes made in the air fryer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss when I upload. I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know if you tried any of these recipes and if so, which one was your favorite. Also, tag me on Instagram, at Narissa Nicole, Nicole with a K. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.